What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So you can hear I'm very happy because this is one of the rare occasions that I'm actually making a clear video of a stage. And yes, Annihilation 4 just came out like half an hour ago and I've already cleared it. And I want to make a video about how to clear it. <laughs> Except with my super nerdy like try hard team. So for those of you who wants a simple homework to just copy from, this is not for you. But if you just want to see what is coming and you want to see my thoughts and my ideas on how I cleared it, like I've already done this in CN. I've already done it in CN. So this is really just what I've done before, kinda. And there are a unstable, unstable possibility in this run, I will put it down in the description and like the full, like the really hard part, you know, how usually like when you get 350 kills, the real deal becomes, I will put that in the description below. So let's begin. Full try hard mode. Now, since I assume a lot of us haven't done Annihilation for a long time, like I haven't done it ever since my Annihilation 3 video, which got tons of dislikes. You bring your Vanguards on to generate the DP because it doesn't automatically regenerate. So two Vanguards, automatic regen, because I don't want to bother with any of them. So as you can see, this really is separated into two lanes. I am putting AFLA here down first, just so that she doesn't get targeted. These are like the basic, right? Thorns, OP. He will deal most of the damage on the top lane. You can always have faith in Thorns. Down on the bottom, Blaze facing up, just so that later on I can help deal damage on this top row and defend the bottom row as well. So yes, I'm technically splitting the these bottom row into two. Hoshi in front of Thorns. Obvious reasons, you n never put thorns at the front tanking, you always put a defender in front of them. And then here goes Saria with her skill 1 that only heals when there is a need. Because the bottom lane is relatively speaking easy, especially with some additional device later on. So here goes thorns full power mode. It's begun. So more DP, these are just gonna sit here for a long time. So obviously top doesn't have a healing defender, so I'll put a medic there. Bring whoever you want. If you have Telopsis, you'll probably do just fine as well. Like whoever it is, just bring a medic and the defender. Another defender, Mudrock. In this situation, I'm really doing it because I never had Mudrock in CN, so I'm just testing out how she does, but in back then I just had these two up the top and it just it still kind of worked so as you can see here goes the drones coming out these drones you must get down because you will get these to chop down the fungus usually i would wait for the drones to come out a bit and then Exia can have her skill like finally hitting them as they're going in because that drone as they come to this top will immediately escape so yeah Delaying that eight, uh, extra deployment is really important there. So this is probably just gonna keep going for a long time. As you can see, I retreated my Texas so that I can have more spaces. I have faith in that my Zima will do the region. And you, as you can see, I only have one unit limit left. So yeah, that's why I needed to deploy extra. Now, this is just a lot of waiting time. If you want to know what's going in the middle, you can keep watching, but I will leave a time down below telling you like when the real intensive stuff, like the where the key timing you want to look out for is down below in the description. There should be two of them. One is where like there is a potential for you to fail, which actually caused my CN run to be really unstable. I don't even know if this runs stable because as you can see, this is my first time doing auto on it so there's absolutely no control on my end so 
Let's keep going. Actually, maybe you want to keep watching for a tiny little bit because there is a an important part. You see these? These SP generating stuff. I'm putting them one on Saria and two on Ayafiata. This one is purely so that if anything happens to Saria, she can always, like, if anything happens down the bottom row, Saria will always have the SP to heal both of, like, all three of them. Just in case. But AF Villa should be perfectly safe. Blaze and Saria are quite tanky, so this should be totally fine. Then I'll have two more of the de these devices. As you can see, I don't need any of them up the top row. They don't need any of those, you know, finicky, weird, random stuff to help them. I could have put one on Mudrock to help her generate like her skill a bit more, but in this case I want to put her on, but I want to put them on Aya Fiatla, so that she always has her skill too charged. So if you want to skip, you can skip now. It's just a lot of me talking until we get to 300 and a bit ish. Yeah, as you can see, Zima, I think I have M3'd her skill one, like a long time ago. So as you can see, the drones are coming out, right? But I'm not deploying my exit just yet. I wanted to wait for them about coming to this tile. Then I deploy my exit. I found that that is about the right timing for a M3 Exia, that is. If your Exia is not M3 or you're using another sniper, the timing will, depending, will depend on you. So here goes another device. I will put it on a Fiatla. As you can see, I cleared out these four funguses just because I'm gonna put those um, electric zappy zap devices on those. So yeah, as you can see, a Fiatla is literally destroying everything here. So you might wonder why am I putting two DPS over here is because there is a potential debuff that is coming and that is completely random. So RNG does not like keep the, the RNG doesn't like the seed is not the same apparently. So last time I did it, this debuff were actually was actually on my blaze. So if this time it's on Saria, I might not have enough DPS and hence my entire run will be slowed down. Which is very scary, not gonna lie. If that happens, I will have to redo this. I will have to redo this entire run. And then like probably change some parts of it out. But that is a bit too early to be worried about. Here we go, 200 enemies. As you can see, Thorns it's just carrying hard. Drones coming in. I see them coming about here. You see, about this block. Then I start sh dropping my Exia, and then it is perfect. I start placing these down. See? Then my top row is a lot more safer. And the top bottom row is already easy anyway. So I have no worry down the bottom. So. Like I mentioned, my CN one, my CN run wasn't really that stable because I didn't have Mud Rock. I'm not sure having Mud Rock helps with the matter or not because of her talent and her skill. They're just really good, and I'm not sure if I M3 her skill too will will it change the run a lot. I'm not sure because it ain't M3 yet. <laughs> so, as you can see, there's a lot of unstable potentials around here. If you want to do your own run, I would definitely recommend like either get either make sure that no matter how the bosses ends up walking, you can finish them so that some delay wouldn't matter at all or like some pace up wouldn't matter at all because maybe in this situation, I feel like this older run is a bit faster than my own. So that's why you see my Thorns was using his skill a bit late. I'm using these devices a bit late as well. It is just my feeling. I'm, I'm not really sure, to be honest. These Frost Drones, like 
extra's timing isn't really the biggest deal here. It will always be fine no matter what. I'm putting down more of these zapping mechanics here. I'm putting one of these SP, another one on Aya Filler, so she will all pretty much always have a skill two on hand. Really OP with this strategy. Not gonna lie. Like if even if you don't have blaze, maybe you can just put like two two um healing medic uh def healing defenders down the bottom you probably would have been fine or just like you know do something interesting done or maybe you can just put two defenders one healing and just another random defender might do the trick as well because aga filler is insane as you can see infinite sp so we're coming to 283 I'm I'm kind of hoping I make it through this run perfectly without stable issues, but I also kind of want to fail so you guys can know that like how my totally OP operators can still fail because I am using Serto, right? So I, I kind of I'm kind of hoping both. Either ways, this would be a good informational kind of video. Like, I'm not trying to do a, oh, if you do it my way, it will be 100% stable, because that's not, if you know me, you know that that's not the kind of content I like to make. I really prefer, like, giving information and let people think. Again, if you don't want to think, you just want to copy, there is, like, probably 200 homeworks up there now, like, um... I don't, I don't, does Kirsten V still even do videos? Excuse me mentioning other people's names, but like there's a lot of content creators that are making good, clear videos anyway. So there's probably no need for you to copy my strategy. I'm waiting for a, a, see? Attack decrease debuff on my blaze. You might seem, it's, you might think it's not like substantial, but like if this goes on to Aja Fjella and her skill to gets nerfed hard yeah this this run can be totally delayed so i actually did my run assuming that it would be delayed i will show you real quick real soon but that is what i meant by the whole like potential bottleneck so, Silver Ash I put here because I thought like I could cover up this decrease in attack. I think it wasn't he wasn't really needed. So, if you want to, you could have a spare operator here at the end. Here you have these ice ones. Extra would tank them just fine. And because while she's frozen, her skill would not activate. I would still get these Mr. Booms. See, the drone going through doesn't really matter. So here's the first boss, right? As you can see, this one is a bit delayed. So I actually let the boss through the first time. What I didn't have was my Mudrock wasn't dead back then. <laughs> and now my Thorns is dead. So this is already an unstable run, dare I say. And now if the boss didn't die, before the second boss come through, the second boss will be super buffed. So in this case, I think I must take over to make sure that I make it through this run. So as you can see, like a single mistake can really get you screwed up as like all annihilations, right? So When you're getting to do when you're getting ready to do annihilations, you wanna make sure that you have your eyes on this thing, cause you might just turn out like me and you just completely screw up like my run. 
so i will definitely do another run of this and see how i can change this entire thing maybe put my silver ash up the top maybe that would have helped i'm not sure at all you know if there's a chance to fix my run i'll fix my run and now i know that mud rock is not invincible so yes I hope this helped you guys, even though this is quite a failure of a run. I hope that it provided enough information for you guys to do your own tries. And don't fail like me, because bad example of a whale having so much power in his hand and can't even use it properly. That is me. Perfect. I, I'm not sad at all. <laughs> yeah, definitely not sad at all. I'll see you guys in the next video, guys. Oh, by the way, if you liked it, please like it. Um, if you don't like this video because you think my operators are so overpowered and I still suck, yeah, you can hit that dislike, but please don't. You're, you're just going to hurt me more. And that mean, I've already failed enough. I don't want my video to fail as well. So please, please just, just, keep, just leave a like and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.